Hello, my name is John Rose, and in this video, I'd like to take a closer look at how to calculate our resting metabolic rate, or our basal metabolic rate, so that we can use that number in addition to our activity throughout the day, all the other activity, the exercise, or whatever we're doing, to make sure that when we do the first of my three-step process that we give our body everything that it needs. Uh, it's real important that when we take a solid food vacation that we, we, we have plenty of energy. It's also very important that we don't lose any lean body mass. So there's a way to figure that out. And it begins by, trying to fi by figuring out how many calories do we burn when we do nothing at all. Again, that's called the resting metabolic rate uh, or the basal metabolic rate. And there's a, a very simple formula that I found that I believe works better than any other formula. And to use it, we need to halfway understand what we're supposed to weigh. So there's a formula for that also. And the formula goes that for the first five feet, it's 100 pounds. For women, you add, for every inch, you add two to three pounds. And for men, it's five pounds. So let's use an example here where we have a man and a woman that are both five foot 10. So if we look at the woman first at 5'10", we'll use an average between two and three and use two and a half. So her ideal weight should be 125 pounds approximately. Now women are usually around 20% body fat. In fact, if we look at children, healthy children uh, are around 12% body fat. And then when they go into puberty, the boys go from 12 to 15, the girls go from 12 to 18, maybe 20. So in this example, I'm going to use 20 for women and 15 for men. And that's your ideal weight with the right amount of fat, average amount of fat for people. So for the woman who's 125 pounds at 20% body fat, we multiply uh, 125 times 80%, that's her lean body mass, we get 100 pounds. Now we take that number, we multi multiply times 13.79, so now this is a really easy uh, equation to figure out. Uh, it's 1,379 calories is how many calories this woman's going to burn uh, by doing nothing but watching TV all day long. Now, when we're doing that, 60% of those calories are fat, and the others are carbohydrates. Now, as soon as we start doing things like I am, I'm not using fat doing this, I'm using carbohydrates. But if I do this for 20 minutes straight, my body's going, oh my God, he's still doing it, let's start using fat. So, if we do the same movement over and over, let's say I'm gonna go out and walk, or jog, or bike, and I'm consistent, and I'm doing the same thing over and over and over, the first 20 minutes is carb, 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 carb. At the 20 minute mark, the body knows, hey, they got a, we got a small carbohydrate fill tank, let's kick in the fat. At a half hour, we're at 50% fat. At an hour, 90% of the calories we're burning are fat. So if you really want to lose a lot of fat, what you do is you go for a long two hour bike ride, where the first hour, your overall fat burning percentage is close to 42%. The second hour is 90% overall. So you can burn a lot of fat that way. So what I'm trying to do is to make sure we have plenty of energy, we don't deplete our carbohydrate fill tank and hit the wall as athletes have to do when they run the marathon and all of a sudden they're cramping because their, their body is going after their lean body mass for fuel. So we don't want that to happen. To do the first of my three step process successfully, you have to have the energy. You don't want to lose anything you don't want to lose and we don't want to lose any lean body tissue. We only want to lose stuff that doesn't belong inside of us. So. We start with 1,379 calories, then we figure out, well, what else do we do throughout the day? God, I'm a mom with three kids, I'm moving all over the place, I'm carb, carb, carbing all day long. So when we look at how much extra calories you're burning for the day, we can go, oh my God, I burned another 1,000 calories and just about all of them were carbs, because nothing was aerobic, but I was always here and there and here and there. So if you have a job like a clerk at a store and you're always walking and running, construction workers, they can walk five, 10 miles a day, but it's usually not always consistent, it's here and do something, here and do something. Those are all carbs. But then if you're doing something consistent, then you start hitting the, you start going into fat. So what you do is you take your basal metabolic rate and you add to that all your other activity. Now if you start exercising, uh, that's, uh, there are different activity levels and you can find um, uh, websites that will tell you how many calories you're gonna burn based on your height and weight and all these type of factors uh, and calculate, uh, am I burning 10 calories a minute or five calories a minute? Uh, and then there's a good rule of thumb we can use for walking. The average person is going to burn about 100 calories uh, for every mile they walk or they run. But wait a second, I can run it twice as fast exactly. So you're burning more calories, but you're not doing it for as long. And you're walking, it takes longer, so you still burn about the same amount of calories. It's a good rule of thumb. So if you go out and walk for about an hour, 
the average person walks about a four, about four miles in an hour. You can walk faster, you can walk slower pretty easily. But if you do four miles, that's another 400 calories you burn, perhaps, if you're average. If you're real big, of course, you're gonna burn more. If you're real small, it's not gonna be that much. So you need to extrapolate for that. But otherwise, we can say, okay, I had 1,379 calories, that's all I did. I, I'm not a mom, I wasn't chasing things, but I went out and walked for, for an hour, I burned another 400 calories, so now 1,779 calories I burned. Now, remember, 40% of those calories at rest were carbohydrates, and then it depends on what you did. There's about an overall fat burning percentage of about 42% for those 400 calories. So now you can say, okay, that's how much fat I burned, the rest are carbs. Now you can figure out how many carbs you burn for the day. And what you're gonna realize is that if you just probably consume the minimal amount of calories for your resting metabolic rate, when you're doing juices that are high in carbohydrates, you're gonna probably fill up and top off your carbohydrate fuel take every day, and that's what you want to do. You never want to do this and not drink enough juice because if we don't replenish our carbs on a daily basis, what happens is that fuel tank slowly empties. When it empties, gluconeogenesis kicks in where the body's got to create carbohydrates out of mostly lean body tissue, muscle mass. This is why people yo-yo diet so much because they don't know how to keep their carbohydrate fuel tank full. They lose lean body tissue and now their metabolism lowers. So we don't want that to happen. So in this example, five foot 10 pound, or five foot 10 inch woman uh, will need 13, 7, 1,379 calories approximately. Now how much juice does that make? Well, it depends on how many calories are in the juice you're drinking. If there's only 100 calories per pint in what you're drinking, you're gonna need about 14 pints of juice. But if it's 200 calories a pint, you only need seven pints of juice. So somewhere between seven and and 14 pints, perhaps it depends. That would be a good range. We don't know for sure what we, uh, how many calories we're getting from our juices because they do vary quite a bit. Carrots at 205, so if you're making vegetable juice and you're using carrots as your base, you're not gonna have any problem with calories. But if you use cucumber and celery as your base, celery only has 91 calories per pint and, and cucumber is only 78 calories per pint. So if you made a gallon of vegetable juice and you use carrot as your base and a gallon of, of vegetable juice using cucumber and celery as your base, there can be about a 500, 600 calorie difference. And that means if you're only drinking a gallon of juice a day, uh, in three or four days, you might start losing your lean body mass. So you gotta drink a lot. You gotta be aware of what you're drinking. And if you have days that are low, you can catch up by doing something like sweet potato and apple, which have 540 calories and 300 calories respectively. Do a 50-50 drink of that, a pint of that's gonna be 430 calories. A good thing to add to your routine if you're uncertain or if you're, you're unable to drink enough juice. But we wanna drink a lot of juice for several reasons. One, to keep the carbohydrate fuel tank full. Another is to flush through the pipes and get rid of the stuff that's still in there. Uh, uh, and then by default, we know that if we get a minimal amount of calories, we know we're getting plenty of protein, we're getting plenty of carbohydrates. If we're drinking vegetable juices, we're getting plenty of fat, because they're about 12% fat. But to be on the safe side, I always suggest people to take a tablespoon of oil a day because when people go on very low calorie diets, where they're consuming no fat at all, they can have a gallbladder attack because the gallbladder needs at least 10 grams of fat a day to empty its contents. And if it doesn't, it can have a gallbladder attack. So a nice precaution, and just to make sure we get all of our essential fatty acids, uh, men can take a tablespoon of flax oil, and women, hemp oil. And men can use hemp oil too, that's okay. Uh, and again, if we're doing a lot of vegetables, we're getting our fats there, but to be on the safe side, not a bad idea to add that to make sure we're giving our body everything it needs. Now let's take a look at uh, a man that's 5'10". Remember women, we, we take every inch and multiply it times two or three. I took an average of two and a half, that's how I got 125. With men, it's a multiple of five. So 5'10 would be 150 pounds. Now I'm 5'10", I only weigh 140 pounds. Uh, but I only have about 5% body fat. Uh, and, the, and the numbers that I'm gonna use now would be assuming that they're the average kid that went from 12% to 15%, so we use 15% for men. If you weigh 150 pounds, if that's your ideal weight, uh, and you're supposed to be 15% body fat, 85% times that is 127.5. Multiply that times 13.79, we get 1,758 calories. Now that's what a, a person that size would need. Now you might be 5'10", you weigh 200, but that's not your ideal weight. We gotta calculate our ideal weight based on this formula. First, five feet is 100 pounds. For women, it's two to three pounds for every inch over, depending on if we're very muscular or not. And men around five, maybe a little bit more, five and a half, six, and maybe a little bit less. But remember, when we look at our total weight, there are seven major components of weight. 
And to illustrate my point here and to put things in perspective, when I was 20 years old, I weighed 160 pounds. I had about probably 85% body fat. When I was 30, I weighed 160 pounds. But now I was more like 6% uh, body fat. When I was 39 years old, I weighed 160 pounds and was about 6% body fat, uh, something like that. Uh, but then, right before I turned 40, I do my seventh juice fast. I went the distance until I stopped pooping. I weighed 45 pounds of crap that came out of me. I lost 20 pounds on the scale, so I went from 160 to 140, so now I'm 140. So if I look at that number 160 and take it times uh, uh, nine, uh, what would that be, 94%? That's like uh, 150.4. So that is what I would have thought my lean body mass was, but no, I had a 20 pound cesspool, so I only had like 130.4. So if you take my weight at 160 at 85%, we're looking at 136 pounds. If you look at 140 at 95%, we're looking at 133 pounds. So you can see that weights can be really different. In fact, here's another good example. Take two men that are 200 pounds. One is 5% body fat, the other is 50% body fat. <laughs> Obviously, two, body, two different body shapes. Uh, one has 190 pounds of lean body mass, and the other only has 100 pounds of lean body mass. So that's the number we want to use to multiply times 13.79 to calculate our resting metabolic rate. And then to that, we add to that our activity. And why do we do that? Because we want to make sure we keep our carbohydrate fuel tank full. This is why I got into this 28 years ago. I perfected a very complicated mathematical procedure. So every minute I knew what my carbohydrate fuel tank was doing. I calculated how much fat I was burning and carbohydrates I was burning uh, when I was doing nothing. And as soon as I started exercising, I knew what kind of activity I was doing and whether it was all carbs or uh, it was a, a geometrical progression where I finally got to a point where 90% of my calories were fat. So I went through all those calculations every day and I kept track of my carbohydrate fuel tank. And I have a really good understanding of how that goes up and down, up and down. And I understand why some diets work and don't work for different people. If you're a low carbohydrate burner, you can get away with these low carbohydrate diets. But if you're the type of person who has to run after kids all day long or you're doing construction and you're, you're, and you're never doing anything aerobic but you're burning tons of carbs, those diets aren't gonna suit you well. And the only way you get away with it is they got you eating so much excess protein that then we can use that to create carbohydrates. In fact, most athletes, bodybuilders especially, who are eating these real high protein diets, they're getting most of their carbohydrates from all that excess. But in the, in the meantime, they're damaging their body. All that excess animal protein is going to damage the kidneys. That means your lymph system's not going to get filtered. And that's the beginning of all of our disease process is when the lymph system backs up. And I, Go into that much more detail in several videos. Go down to the description box below and make sure you watch these two videos because I put the information together that no one else has ever done. I studied a lot of different people. I stood on the shoulders of a lot of giants and I got some great information from standing on all these shoulders and I finally put it together in a way no one has ever done before. So you can go to Healing Secrets Revealed and Medicine is the Ultimate Tool of Control and you'll see where I talk about two short-term stages of disease and four long-term, I mean, uh, two short-term self-limited diseases, rather, and four long-term stages of disease. And it's not complicated. The reason why disease is a mystery to our so-called experts is they don't study the lymph system. So they don't know what's causing most of our problems. And how do you rectify that problem? It's simple, you do the first of my three-step process. Go down below and you'll see uh, a seminar I gave on how to do this. Make sure you drink a lot of juice, the more the better. Don't be afraid of drinking too much, but be afraid of drinking too little. Can you drink water? No, if you don't drink your juices. No water if you don't drink your juices. <laughs> drink those juices. Quit drinking that water. You need those calories, you need that stuff to go in there and scrape this stuff off the colon's wall. That's not like the plaque in our arteries, it's more like axle grease stuck on the side of the wall. Imagine taking some Vaseline, petroleum jelly or axle grease and sticking it inside a pipe or you put it on the inside of a pipe somewhere. You can run, run stuff by that all day long, it's not moving. But when you drink nothing but juices and you put nothing else in that food tube, 
the body, the cold is going to go, you know what, I got some stuff in here I can work on. I got this axle grease, petroleum jelly, Vaseline gunk over here. I'm going to start working it out. And the next thing you know, you'll be pooping it out of you. I'm telling you, my friends, this is one of the most exciting things you can do. Think about it. I'm telling you right now, you've got a huge cesspool in you. I had a 20-pound cesspool in me. And when you get rid of it, it's, it's exhilarating. You have no idea how good it feels. You know, when you get a splinter in your finger, it always feels so good when you get out of it. Think about being sick and you throw up and you feel like a million dollars. Well, when you get rid of this crap day after day after day, week after week, and for me, three months it took to stop pooping, I crawled out of a rut I didn't know I was in. I had no idea my life could go to another level in every aspect of my life. So if you guys haven't done this before, you got to do it. If you're trying to transition to a raw food diet and you think the baby step approach is the, the best way to go, how do you know there's not a better way unless you try this one first? The problem a lot of people have is they don't drink enough juice. I've coached thousands of people and a good percentage of those people have done juice fast before. Not one of them, not one of them, not one of them did it right. They didn't drink enough juice. Even Gabriel Cousins only has his patients and students drinking only a half a gallon of juice a day. I had a student go there and did the program. I already coached him before. He was one of my best students. And when he went there and did uh, Gabriel's program, he suffered like almost everyone else was. That's why when you go to the Tree of Life, you can't do Gabriel's juice fast and work at the same time. Because, Gabriel, you're not drinking enough juice. My friend, give him more juice. Autolysis doesn't kick in. Pavo Arolo was wrong. You're doing it like Pavo did it, and Pavo did it wrong. I'm telling you, man. You got to modify what you're doing so that people can do this and also work. And guess what? They're going to work better. Here you are, Gabriel. God, you know I love you, man. You're saying, hey, you know, we got to do this juice fast, but you can't work because you're not going to do any good at work. Well, wait a second. If you do the juice feast, which is why David really clinged to that word when I called it a juice feast. He goes, oh, I can use that and, and say, hey, I'm not doing a juice fast. I'm doing a juice feast. <laughs> yeah, I started calling it a juice feast a long time ago because that's really what it is. You got to drink a lot of juice. And it's not about deprivation when you drink a lot. You're not going to be hungry. Energy level skyrockets. And when you start seeing that crap come out of you, I'm telling you, you're going to crawl over a rut you didn't know you're in. So, Gabriel, put these guys on twice as much juice. Autolysis does not kick in as long as you do any kind of food at all. Even lemon juice will kick that out. So, it's got to be either be 100% water or 100% juices. And when you do the juices, you got to drink enough. If you don't, it's not going to be a pleasant experience. You're not going to flush the crap out. That's why these people are feeling so bad, Gabriel is there, you're, not, you're not putting enough stuff through there for them to have good bowel movements. And then their poor carbohydrate fill tank is on empty the whole friggin' time, per near. When you only drink a half gallon of juice, man, you're, you're just playing with the bottom half of your carbohydrate fill tank. You want to play the top half of the fuel tank, so every time you drink, you top off the excess, and the excess turns to fat. That's how we're designed. We got two main fuel tanks, and the predominant fuel source is supposed to go into the small fuel tank to make sure we keep it full and the excesses go, will go to the fat fuel tank. And now we're so confused about nutrition and we got people following these uh, low carbohydrate diets thinking that's the way to go because our body does have uh, uh, a, uh, a backup system when our carbohydrate fuel tank runs empty. But it's a backup system. It's for emergencies only. We don't work out of an emergency mode, and yet that's what all of these low carbohydrate diets are doing. You're working out of, of, a, uh, out of a, an emergency mode. It works, it can be done, but it's not ideal. It's not how we're designed. None of those foods want us to eat it. There's only one food out there that wants, to, wants us to eat it, and it's the fruit. So that should predominate our diet. So. That's not easy for a lot of people to do. They might have trouble with the, the fruit in the beginning. So where do you start? The first of my three-step process. Go down below if you haven't been there before. Watch my seminar. I'll teach you how to go on a solid food vacation. Take it one day at a time. Go till you stop pooping. And I guarantee you, my friends, when you do it, you're in for a treat.